Hey everyone, so I've always thought that it would be fun to recreate one of the most notoriously abused functions in any game that's ever been, the uh, spray paint decals from, from Counter-Strike, from the old school Counter-Strike all, all the way up to Global Offensive, even though they're a bit different these days. And I'd always been meaning to make it in Unreal Engine and never really, never really sat down and did it. So today we're going to figure it out. I've put together another care package for you guys, yeah, including a, a nice little spray paint sound. So if you'd like to download the files and follow along, there is a link down in the description. But to, to get started, all we need to do is set up our decal. So we'll just make a new material. I'm just going to call this spray mat. And we'll open it up and drop in our texture. Now decals are basically just or decals, decal. They're just a, a material that just exists in the world and puts an image up against other surfaces like blood splatter, uh, bullet holes, that kind of thing. But uh, to get them set up, just get your main node here and change the material domain to a deferred decal. We'll also need to set the blend mode to translucent. And where it says decal blend mode, uh, we want to come down here and set it to debuffer translucent color. This is so that it appears, so that it shows properly on, uh, in like shadows and, and, and react to lighting in a, in a correct way. And then all we need to do is plug in base color and opacity. And our decal will work fine. All right, hit save and we'll check it out in the editor. So all you need to do is just click, drag it into the scene. And you can see already that it just, it appears quite nicely just on the ground. Uh, but there are problems. So if it's on a weird angle, it's not going to, it's not going to read properly. And also it's got depth. So if we do things like well, let's let's have a look at it over on the over on the staircase, just so we can, just so we can see. Yeah, so it's got it's got thickness, and this will interact with our player models, and it's 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 not good. So we're gonna we're gonna fix that in our in our blueprint. So for now, just delete this, and we will move on. So the key to making this work is in uh, line tracing. It's just a simple technique in the engine that you use to, uh, to to sort of cast a point from one location to another. And then do things where it hits and the and the things that it interacts. So I've, I'm here with the with the first person uh, template character. I've just hidden the gun and the projectiles. So let's just find the find the blueprint and open it up. Okay, here we are. I'm just going to use a, a straight up key input. But if you'd like to set an actual input in your project settings, uh, it should it should work just as just as well. Find the key. Where is our key? This is going to take forever. I wonder if I can just type in T key. There we go. T key. All right. So from our T key, very simple. We're just going to do, uh, drag off from here and type in line trace and find line trace by channel. So know that it looks like this. And it's going to feed in a start and an end point, which we will find by using the camera. So just drag the camera in so we get that. We need to get the world location and we need to get the forward vector. So the world location obviously is where it is in the actual scene and the forward vector is the direction that it's pointing, the, the forward direction of that camera. So we're just going to take the world location and this is going to be our start point, our start vector. And we're going to need to take the, we'll take our forward vector and we'll multiply it by a float. This float is going to be the distance that the ray travels. For the sake of this, I'll set to 1500, fairly large value. You might want yours to be a bit closer, but that's the number that you pick if that's what you want to change. We're going to add these two vectors together, the world location and the forward vector. And the result of this goes into our endpoint. Now, if you'd like to see this work, uh, so just hit compile. If we hit the draw debug type and draw for duration, uh, hit compile, then hit play be able to see when we hit T what's going on. So here's our ray and 1500 is, is quite long. It's quite a long, uh, long line to cast, but it's working for the sake of our tutorial. And that's, that's ray tracing basically. And once you've got this far, the, uh, the key to handling these, these line traces, we go from the out hit and get the break hit result node. We get all of this data that we can play with from a, from a line trace. And our oh, standard practice for me, at least here, is to get a branch, uh, go from the return value of their line, so that if the, if the line trace succeeds, 
uh, we can do stuff off this true node. So that's line tracing set up. Now we're ready to move on. So from here, uh, this is where we're going to spawn the decal where, uh, where, the, where the line trace ends. So head back to the editor. Uh, we'll find our, our folder. Here it is. We need a new blueprint class. Make an actor. This one's going to be our spray BP. And this is the actual actor that we're going to be spawning when the player hits our, hits our spray key. So in add component, we need to add a decal. And this decal over on the right is going to be our spray decal, our spray mat. And that's really it. That's, uh, that's, that's totally finished. We don't have to muck around with any transforms, any, any rotations or anything like that. Just leave it as is. Then head back to our first person character and we're ready to do some kind of boring maths, but it's a lot simpler than last video, believe me. So uh, let's start with, well, for one, uh, let's just go spawn actor. Spawn actor from class. And that class is going to be our spray, our spray BP. And right click on spawn transform here and split this drug pin to bring up these different, uh, these different values. And we want to right click again on the transform rotation and split that one too. So we get even more values. So uh, from the impact point here, this will be the location of our, of our spray. And the rotation is going to be set by, by the camera again. So if we, we'll just start, we'll just get the camera, duplicate that. Uh, we'll need the forward vector and we will need the world rotation, get world rotation. Perfect. Now from this forward vector, let's go ahead and uh, get, let's get rotation from X vector. Rotation from X vector. Um, actually, I don't think we need the rotation here at the moment. So split this pin, split our rotation pin, the rotation from X vector, and set the rotation here in Y. And that should be all. Let's see how it works just for just now. So hit T, uh, yeah, so we got some problems with the transforms and it's also a little big. So we can fix, the, we can fix that up. There's going to be a, a, different, a different rotation value for if it's up on a wall or down on a floor, uh, just because of the way that, you know, just, just for realism's sake, basically. We want things to be upright no matter which way we face them, but on a wall, we always want them to be upright and straight. So, oh, you know what, we will, we, we will use the, the rotation here. So get well rotation from the camera. And in fact, let's duplicate our spawn actor. Um, set in some transform values too. So let's set its flatness to 0 0.05, uh, even lower, 0 0.01. And its Y value to 0 0.5 and its Z value to minus 0 0.5. So I've gone ahead and done this already. So these are just the values that make everything work right. So if you don't believe me, just set these to default, see how it looks. It's entirely up to you. And we'll copy these values for the bottom one, 0 0.01, 0 0.5, and Z not minus, but just 0 0.5. Now we need to let the material know, or the, the blueprint know when it's up on a wall and when it's not. Uh, so we'll come out of this branch with another branch. Which, uh, so we're just going to find basically the, the Z value, the orientation of the, of the decal once it's on the ground. So from this impact point once more, uh, let's get an equal, a vector equal, and just set one in the Z value. This float, you don't really have to worry about. It's just for errors uh, and for, for margin of error. So drag that to the condition. Give myself a little bit more space here. And then we'll uh, sort out our rotations. So from this world rotation here, let's split this guy. We don't need all of these values. And we'll float plus float, add 90. And plug this into the X roll over here. And I think, uh, yeah, so we'll put some harder values here. Minus 90 and 90. So this is when it's up on a wall and this bottom one will be when it's on the ground. Make sure everything's hooked up. The location is the impact point like before. And 
we're gonna need to take we'll take our impact normal get the rotation from x vector split this we'll just use the y value as the y value because that should return the direction of the camera and we'll add we'll add 180 here so that it's not showing up backwards when it's on the ground so that it's rotated in the right way and that really should be all of our maps. So I hope that made sense to, to everybody. It's really rather simple. We're just finding values and adjusting rotation based on the result of this branch, which is whether or not the, the decal is on the ground or on, a, or on a wall. So you hit save and compile, and we'll see how it works. Uh, so we're still on an angle on the ground, but on the wall, it's working perfectly. So we'll just adjust our final value. <laughs> okay, so the reason it's not the reason it's not working is because of this node. We need to come from the impact normal, not the impact point. So with all of this set up and our values put in, let's see how it works in the world. Perfectly on the ground. So it's putting it's being put down whatever direction we're facing, whatever direction the camera's facing on the ground, and on the wall. It's always upright. All right, mission accomplished. But we can add a bit more style to it, a bit more, a bit more sort of flavor. That's the point of the sound effect. So hit escape, and we'll also come back here to our line trace uh, node, and we'll turn off, turn off our debug because we don't need to see that red line anymore. We know that it works. And let's uh, let's head back to our spray blueprint, and come over here to the event graph. So we're working with the begin play node and just come straight out of begin play with a play sound at location. And that location is going to be this actor. So we'll get actor location. Plug that in. The sound is going to be our spray sound. Spray sound. And then we need to, well, we need to go back to our material because we're going to be controlling the opacity as well. We want it to sort of fade in. Uh, in that very Counter-Strike way. So come back to our material, come from Opacity into a Multiply, plug that into Opacity, and make a new scalar, this one called uh, Opacity, and plug that in. And we do want it to default at zero. So save the material. And head back to our Blueprint. From uh, this node, the Play Sound node, let's create we need, to, we need to change the values within uh, within the material. So you want to create a dynamic material instance. Uh, the parent here will be our decal. So just drag that into the blueprint. What is going on here? Oh, yeah, that's the wrong node. So from the decal, create dynamic material instance. There we go. Because it needs to be set in the actual node. So click that up. And now we're going to make ourselves a very simple timeline, uh, which is just a tool that we use to manipulate values without even needing to use the tick and, and you know, boring repetitive calculations. So we'll just go add timeline. This one will be called fade in and just double click it to bring up the actual timeline. Now, because it's a float that we're handling, a scalar parameter, add a float track, call this one opacity. And we'll just add two keys. And we'll set the length, the whole length of it to one, just a one second long timeline. The initial time at zero, a value at zero. And the second key time is one, and we want the value to be one. Because our opacity in our material is going to go from zero to one. And this is a timeline that's going to take us there in one second. So back at the graph, that's got our timeline set up. And from here, we'll need to set scalar parameter value in this, uh, oh, no, I don't think that's right. We'll come out of come out of this node. So from the return value of our dynamic instance, set scalar parameter value. Done. And from the update of our timeline, just hook that up to the network. The parameter name is the name of our scalar parameter, which is opacity. That's this little guy here that we just made. And the result of this float, which we called opacity in the timeline, plug that into value. And that's uh that's really it. So we're just playing a sound. We're doing a uh, we're finding the material, the actual decal material, and applying this timeline value to opacity so that when it spawns, that is at begin play, once it's created, 
is going to play our sound and fade in. Let's, uh, let's have a quick look. Perfect. All right, we are nearly done. The last thing to do is just a little tiny bit of spam protection. So head back to our first person character and uh, over on the left here, we'll make a new valuable. We'll call this one can spray. And we're going to leave it as a boolean. And over here at T, we also want it to be defaulted to true. We want the player to be able to, to spray straight away. So we'll get our, uh, get our boolean. Oh, that's the wrong one. Or B and click for a branch. These keyboard shortcuts are very, very handy. And then, so, we'll check, we'll check the, the can spray value. If it's, if it's false, we'll do nothing. But if we can spray, if it's true, uh, we'll set it to false and then proceed with our, uh, with our blueprint. Then at the end here, after these spawn actor nodes, we'll come out of here into a delay. We'll delay for, let's say one and a half seconds and plug them both into this delay. And then we'll set, we'll set can spray to true once it's done. So now the blueprint is going to check this boolean and then uh, if, it, if the boolean is true, it's going to execute all of this code ending with a one and a half second delay before it sets the, the value back to true. Just so that we can't spam the, the spray paint key. And then we'll hit play, we'll see how it goes. Yep, working perfectly. So you can probably hear my keyboard. <laughs> so it's not, uh, it's not spamming the image and it's not, uh, so, you know, so there's just, there's just no, no spamming, really. That's the purpose of, purpose of that final piece of code. So that's, uh, that's it for this tutorial. Yeah, it's just one of these effects that I just really thought I really wanted to, wanted to play with, especially back when I was just starting out with, uh, with game design. And it feels nice to have actually sat down and, and figured it out and done it in a way that, in a way that I really quite like. So thanks to everyone for watching. Much love, and I will see you all next time.